You're good. All right, we got everybody? Good evening, we'll get started. Good evening, welcome to the February 22nd, 2022 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is, com is composed of two parts, a public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask, and ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or a suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You may, you may, you are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available for the Weathersfield Public Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any of the other required permits, such as zoning, inlet wetlands, or building. Please contact your building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. With this, I will ask our clerk commissioner, Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you, Mark. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. Can't say that after this. At uh, 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 7023-22 S.H. Dixon, LLC, seeking to replace rear deck railings and stairs with Trex and vinyl product at 71 Main Street. Any resident interested in reviewing an application, speaking on an application, or anyone wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 4 p.m. on the night of the meeting. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the correspondence. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, the seventh day of February, 2022. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. All right, let's get started right away with application number 7023-22, S.H. Dixon, LLC. All right, I think you're muted, Mr. Dixon. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, name and, okay. name, name and address for the record, please. Uh, address is a uh, well. My name is uh, Steve Dixon. Address okay. is a uh, address is ninety three, Corey Village Road, Chester, and Connecticut. That, okay, thank you very much. Welcome. No problem. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about your project? All right. So, uh, all right. So it's um, it's a back deck, um, mm -hmm. that had um boards that were you know rotted. That we okay. just re we replaced the boards. Um, we placed the rotted boards with some tracks and then um, uh, just just painted painted the you know the uh, the boards on the outside and then the railings uh, we put up uh, vinyl railings um, you know a vinyl railings okay uh, I mean it, it was an existing deck you know the, the size didn't change um you know location didn't change all we did just 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 replace uh you know rotted wood with uh treks and vinyl okay typically what we what we ask if you you know if you're going to change like for like material that's you know that's not an issue and doesn't require us getting involved but when you are changing materials we do ask to uh to have you come in front of us and present that for okay, no are there any uh commissioners that want to uh, comment on or ask questions? So Mr. Dixon, uh, on the south side or the left side of the house, as you're looking at it from the street, 
Uh, yes. So there's a large piece of lattice missing. Is that going back in? Oh, y yes, yes. The, the lattice is going in. Um, um, the, when the building inspector came by, um, he, he just, you know, told us to, you know, hold up. Um, yep. So, I, you know, I didn't put any of, of the lattice, any more of the lattice up. Um, because the lattice that was up there had, you know, was kind of rotted out. And in order for me to do it, I had to do, you know, placing the tracks down um, on the deck. I had to remove one side. Um, okay. So I, I, I just, I just didn't put anything else up just until I spoke to you guys just to, uh, you know, see where everything went. Okay. And you said that the lattice is damaged, so that's going to be being replaced? Yes. Now, now we, we do have, now we Go do ahead. have we do have black vinyl, um, black vinyl um, lattice. So I just wanted to make sure that, that was okay, or if I needed to go back, you know, with with wood lattice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and when, if we say yes to the plastic lattice or even the wood, how is it going to be framed? Uh, oh, I mean, it's gonna be picture framed. So you know, you, you're gonna have right, you're gonna have the lattice, and then you're gonna have wood around it to keep everything nice and nice and sturdy. And the reason I ask the question is because some people just sort of hang it there, and it looks awkward. No, no. absolutely horrible. <laughs> the um, the board that's wrapping wrapping the porch all the way around is that is that wood? That's wood. Well, as of this afternoon, it was wood. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you talking about the white? The yeah, white the part? white. Yes, the that, white. That's one, the wood. One by eight or one by six yeah. or whatever it is. Right. That's yes. That's wood. Okay. I think I'd prefer you to go back on the uh, on the lattice completely to uh, that pressure treated wood. Okay. All right. My, no problem. My opinion. I don't know what the other commissioners think. Okay. Now, Mr. Dixon, the specs say that the balusters are steel. Is that so? It's a kind of a Tyvek type, or not Tyvek, uh, Trex type, Azic type well, I, material I, I, on the rail system, but the I, metal I, rails I, are about. Yep. Yes, yes. The, the, the rails are metal, uh, you know, black metal. Um, in between the two vinyl uh, railings, so you got the top and the bottom, and in between that is the uh, the black metal railings. So they're not aluminum; they're actual metal or, or lighter. Uh, well, uh, no, they're, 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 they're lightweight, so um, you know they they could be made out of aluminum. So they, but yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're they're lightweight. And are those solar toppers on the uh, on the yes. on the beams? Yes, they're solar. Yes. Okay. So there's lighting there as well. Yes. All right. Any other commissioners? I have enough information, I think. Okay. All right. Anything else for us, uh, Mr. Dixon? No, I mean, you know, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, just feel free to give me a call. Actually, I do have one other question. Uh, when I went to take a look this afternoon, the stairs going down off the deck down to the ground. What are you going to use for a railing on the those? Uh, that, that, that's going to be the, the vinyl. What's uh, what's up there? Same stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like like I said, you know, I I didn't proceed any further. Of um, course. Because, yeah, because if you guys wanted me to take it down, then I just double the work. So I yeah. just kind of put put a pause on it. Yeah. No, I was just but you know when it's done. And my question is. It's yes. going to be a continuation, same railing going down along right. the stairs. Yes, yes, same railing. And that's one rail, right? Not both sides, just on one side? Or? Yes, it's going to be just one side. Yeah, the other side is up against the deck. So. Up against the house. Right. In the deck in the house, yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, You're good? Okay, uh, let me get back to where it was here. All right, so uh, I need a motion to, uh, I think, close the public hearing. It's the quickest public hearing I've ever had. 
No. <laughs> so moved. Second. All right. All in. All in. Well, let's wait a minute. Voting I'll commissioners bet. tonight. Yeah. Voting commissioners tonight. We've got um, Commissioner Lyons. One, two, uh, three. Commissioner Mig Miglis. Commissioner Hall and Commissioner Mead. And we got Claire in here too. Yep. All right. Six of us. Yep. Okay. So uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Claire's going to check Aye. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hearing, uh, hearing everybody, everybody's in agreement. Pizza boys we'll are on uh, mute there. Okay. Yeah. Damien and Chris. Okay. All right, we'll move on. Public, um, we'll open up the public meeting. And uh, so, would someone like to, so, yes, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, yeah, could we clarify who's voting again? I'm sorry, because there's six of us, right? We need five or are all six can vote? No, five. Think, five, yeah. I think, we, I think we just have, we've got Commissioner Lyons, Commissioner Miglis, uh commissioner mead and, and hall there's six oh and damien's not okay damien's not he's just not providing voting. uh technical support correct okay yeah All right. I'm, I'm still here i just let me know uh oh never mind i'm good yeah you're in. we're gonna need you to chime in now so here we go um we, we're opening up the public meeting do we we need a motion to do that correct Yes, I think we, yep. Vasek made one, I second, we're good to go. Okay. Can I have a motion on application number 7023-22? Make a motion to approve with the following stipulations. Any and all lattice shall be replaced in kind with pressure treated and shall be picture framed as, as submitted tonight in the photographs. Um, other than that, I'm, it, that would be my, my one stipulation. Um, uh, I think the railings as proposed are not inappropriate for that building. Uh, the Trek stacking is not visible from a public way simply because of its location. We can't see the surface of it. Um, the stairs, which are barely visible from a uh, public way are wooden. So we're good there. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Second. I have a, thank you. Discussion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I my own, my concern was it with the lattice, and if it's wood, I think it's nice, so the whole thing doesn't look have that quote plastic look to it. And we can't count on the trees to hide that forever because they don't last forever. So it will be seen at some point. So I would agree with that. Any other comments? All right, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. You're good to go, Mr. Dixon. All right, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Dixon, right, no don't forget to get your building permits, please. OK, I will. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, Kim. All right, uh, approval of minutes. Do we have everybody have that we enough. need? Linda? Motion to approve the um, minutes of February 1st, 2002. I'll second that. Okay. Great job on that one, Linda. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a, we have, I think we have everybody. Yeah, we have enough people that were here. I mean, everybody was there, right? Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then, uh, do we? Did we have two? Yeah, I make a motion to approve the minutes of February eighth, two thousand twenty-two. I'll second. Call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Kim, other business? We have one um, pre-application and uh, Mike is here. 
All right, uh, okay, let's do that. Hello. Mr. Kerr, how are you? You know, can't really complain. All right, good. Uh, I, wa I want to um, share that my personal experience thus far, knock on, knocking on wood, is that your reputation as an organization is far worse than the reality. And having just witnessed that last procedure, I have to say, I don't know what everyone's talking about. You guys are like efficient, lean, mean, and getting it done. I love it. So we do our uh, best. We do our best. And now for me to find out the other side of the coin, you guys ready for some fun? Um, I have uh, I have a lot to go over, and some of this is way outside of what I understand to be normal in the district, uh, and it's because I honestly don't know how to proceed. So I need your uh, I, I I really um I don't have any specifics for what I want, but I know that if I'm going to build a garage behind the Masonic Temple, oh I got to give you my info. My apologies. Um, my name is Micah Kerr. I live at 553 Maple Street in Weathersfield. I am here about 245 Main Street in Weathersfield, the old Masonic Temple, which I've received zoning approval for a change of use and a site plan with quite a few conditions, uh, one of which was to obviously come to you guys. Um, I'm going to be bringing uh, in a future meeting uh, the, the finalized plans to you for for the approvals that I haven't already received. Um, but I wanted to also talk about a few things before I finalize design, because obviously the design process costs money. And um, and I'm still kind of just, just a little bit before kind of closing up that process. So I want to kind of um, at least discuss the biggest issues and get your feedback so I have better direction in the design. Um, I want to build a garage behind the building now when i say behind i mean um the front of the building is on main street to me the back of the building is visible from church street but not visible from main street does that make sense it's the far west of the property okay um the owner of the property uh who is I, i'm in contract to purchase from but we have a lease for now and you have a letter on file mm -hmm. stating that i can propose whatever i need to um they had previously received um, a variance, and it's a deeded variance, for a garage of, uh, I think it's 1184 square feet. It's a very specific footprint, and they also had a, an elevator approved and a whole bunch of other things through historic district and through zoning. Um, so what I'm going to be talking to you about is specifically that garage, because I am going to propose the exact same footprint, so I'm not muddying up any of those waters so i'll say in terms of massing and such well i shouldn't say massing yet but footprint alone this is a previously approved plan um what they came and proposed was um and something that was meant to fit into their residential plans for the building and uh i've i don't recall which meeting it was but i'd been here three times before for this project once uh, in the same way I am now and twice as officially, you know, proposing something. So what I ended up um, realizing is that based on what I've heard folks in here say is that um, you you can't really fake history. I think it's kind of like a, a key part of the historic district. And the, the reality is, is my building is 100 years old in a district full of houses that are 300 odd years old. And <clears throat> If you're going to build an addition on one of those houses, in some cases, it's really easy to do by matching the architecture. But in a brick building, oftentimes by trying to match the brick, you end up really creating a what I think is a what I'm told when I understand is a really bad look. And so for that, I'm I'm proposing what I think is sort of a modern design um, in terms of its architectural roots, um, but it's also um, it's it's got historic roots in the design um and and it's functional and i think it matches well with the buildings around it like with comstock and fair um but it also it's not trying to be um a federalist italiente building in a colonial 
designed residential village, right? Um, so basically what I think you guys have for reference, and I'm not 100% certain, uh, but I think what you guys have for reference is a, a couple drawings that involve and, and a picture involving uh, showing what the siding is meant to look like. Um, and I'm sorry, but my dog is being a problem. I have to lock him out. Go see mama. Go see mama. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, no worries. Yeah. Uh, I forgot he was even in here. Um, so Did you want to share the, share the drawings yeah, with us? Yeah, so let me happy to do so i have i'm prepared to show you guys a bunch of stuff so i don't know exactly how it's going to share because they're in multiple documents so i might need to share then unshare yada yada okay so if i share my screen right so now you see what i'm showing is the is the is what i'm showing changing yes all right mm -hmm. perfect this will be the way to do it then all right so um in the past you have uh, certainly seen i think this um this image here which is my site plan i think it's basically the same thing i brought to you guys before it's a little bit more evolved you guys approved the patio uh some other stuff like that and i i will go back to those things a little bit later but first things first here's the garage that the tab shades had approved basically plopped down onto my drawing so it's there um, there's nothing changed from when the tab shades did it, except for the other stuff in the building. So, um, so a, there's the, the previously approved footprint. And then when it comes to how that looks, I had a buddy do some drawings, just, we were figuring some stuff out. Now, this isn't exactly, hold on here. Uh, that's not working. The, the controls for, um, for zoom were in my way. So sorry. Um, there we go. So this you can see is, you know, an architectural elevation of my building. And then you see in the back, we're looking at using like a vertical shiplap um, or, you know, a square stock siding. And I'd run it vertically and stain it black. So it's, it's clean. It's, um, but it's also how a lot of uh, buildings were sided back in the day. Uh, they would have had a more traditional roof line than this, but in, even in a shed, they would use vertical barn board. And that's kind of what this is, except it's obviously got to be to modern code. And therefore it's not just like one layer of barn board, um, balloon framed and such. So this will be proper cladding over top of a traditionally framed two by six wall um no windows facing west because i have neighbors and i don't think they'll want to look into windows or have light um uh at night coming from anything that might be in the building and uh but then when i go kind of back to the other view you can see from the front you'd have garage doors now i don't this drawing is not this is just a crazy drawing okay I wanted to show you guys like the out there view. I think maybe a little bit more traditional would be garage doors that are, you know, eight by 10 or 10 by 10 versus 16 by 16. But the concept of a garage door with a window above it, mostly glass facing the street. And that doesn't have to stay glass. I understand with things inside the garage, you may not want to be able to see it. But I also uh, came up with some good visual aesthetics to kind of show you um, whether it be really practical. Uh, I don't like this one on the top left. I think you can see my mouse over. That's that's really not far from what we're looking for, right? We're looking at glass roll up doors, um, a, a, you know, a pedestrian entrance on the right hand side. Um, and a this is a 212 pitch roof, which uh, is certainly an option. I'm I'm kind of flexible, but I, I do kind of want it to be a single slab roof because my goal is to put some HVAC equipment on the roof. So a, um, you know, a peak, a typical peak isn't really something I'm, I, that I think would be ideal for me. Um, this one over here on the right is another great example where you can see just we're talking about black siding. Now this one is, again, this is using, I think a corrugated metal. That's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, the siding I'm looking for, I think you have this image. It's on one on the bottom right. 
that's that's you know barn board or or um, clabbered stained black or or certainly a dark color there. Um, so I mean that's the kind of look. This is the aesthetic I'm imagining, and I guess what I really just want is give me your feedback. Tell me the worst. Um, I'm not expecting to propose those two giant doors. I think realistically, I think we've come down to it's probably three regular doors and then the pedestrian entrance. Um, so I guess I have not provided you a, a drawing of that, but- um, Occur. what is a normal door? Because what you're proposing is a normal door for the Westfield Firehouse. Uh, no, well, so this isn't what I'm proposing. Remember, this yeah. is this is not oh. a proposal. This is a pre-hearing. So I'm exactly. I'm eliciting no. feedback. Yes. What is okay. a normal door? Um, I think what is the standard residential garage door is I believe uh, eight feet is it eight feet wide and nine feet wide like by that. eight foot high. Right. Or seven um, foot high. These are commercial, um, being that I am in a commercial zone. Uh, and I would need to be able to, the part of the reason that I want these, this garage is to be able to park my, uh, maybe my delivery vehicle. I mean, I have, I already have a vehicle, but I'll probably have a couple vehicles when the building opens for delivery and for, I think I, uh, running waste to certain places, things like that. So like a, you know, a Ford E250, you know, like a standard van, um, kind of that size but I need to be able to fit those in there. So a 10 foot high, 10 foot wide, I think is what I said earlier, would be a plenty more normal size door um, for a structure like this. Is that, you know, not, not so, in the 16 foot range as, as, uh, as shown, so. Okay. So Mr. Carr, this is Claire Mead. Um, let me just ask, make sure I'm understanding your drawings correctly. The, the drawing that shows the self exposure uh, the yep. self elevation is that to scale? Uh, so again, remember, not a proposal. I'm eliciting feedback. So yeah. yep. what I I'm drew is it, there are measurements on it, so you can see the numbers. I think no, we can um, see the numbers. Yep, I can see the numbers. I'm just okay. I'm just making yep. sure that it's to scale. Yeah, I mean, the way it's drawn is to scale, but it's all of these things are flexible is what I'm trying to say as the guy yeah. proposing it. The most important thing to me at a bare minimum is I would love to have a bare minimum of 20 feet of clearance on the inside. And that's because I just don't know what the future holds. I think as a business owner, it behooves me to be open to future changes that might happen in my industry. Um, and so one thing I, I decided is that if I were ever to have to go through some change, um, I imagine that this, I could potentially move some brewing equipment into this space, have glass doors and, and have it be like copper tanks or something like that, which would be actually quite attractive. You know what I mean? Um, and so if something like that had to happen, and I don't think it will, I, I really don't want to do that. I'd never want to make a high volume of beer here, but as a garage, which is my dry storage, my cold storage, my wet storage, I want to have room to be able to do things in there. Like I will be keeping my dumpster inside there so that my neighbors don't have to deal with it. I'll be keeping my spent grain in there. I'll be keeping, um, uh, compressors, things that make noise, my empty kegs. Um, the goal, partially the goal here is to really have a smaller impact on the community. But since it's also already a pre-approved, I'll say footprint at least, I wanted to see like, what are the extremes? So in, in full disclosure, what I have in front of you is kind of the extremes, right? We're talking, these are 16 foot by 16 foot garage doors. Um, and that was something that I did talk to the guy, my buddy who drew this for me to scale is um, it was an option. Like, do I go for one giant door? Um, because- I, uh, Excuse me to stop you there quickly and to answer, ask you to answer Claire's question. And because I can't see the numbers, I think Basic said the same. So- Oh, you grade. Great. Sorry. I can't see I, the I numbers. Thought, I thought you have these in PDF files. My apologies. Oh, yeah, I can't make them larger. So, oh. so indulge me here if you could just- you take it's 31 feet off grade. Uh, well, and grade Pike. is two feet lower 
the, right. The, that's what you, so it's a little step down from the foundation, yeah, two feet large lower. foundation, yeah. first floor. So you're, you're 31 feet minus the two that the building stands on now. So you're, you're sure, roughly so 29, 29 feet high. So yes, sir. the structure, the footprint you're saying is, is the width of the previous residential garage, but it wasn't 31 feet high. Is that accurate or? Uh, so yeah, yeah, no, the, the vertical elevations, I like I threw this is out here as like, I literally, like I said, the extreme. So the footprint is identical of, of what's pre approved. So I'm not but, asking for a different. Mr. Kerr, I'm sorry, this is Claire Mead again. I just want to kind of go back. You keep saying that the footprint is pre approved. But mm -hmm. I think it's good to be clear that it's not pre approved. It has been approved in the past. But that approval lapses within when it says when We've Amen. gone one year from the approval, so it's not pre-approved for you. It's That's a deeded variance. Maybe in zoning it is. It, yes. But not yes. HTC. But not HTC. Which is why I'm here asking for feedback so I can make right. a design that you will like. I'm uh, here to find a happy solution yeah. for everyone in town. Just so, want to sure. make sure we're all on the same page. It, it's a little more than yeah. semantics, uh, but well, make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. I know right. that I can't do a damn thing without your approval. How's that? It, <laughs> so, okay, so I, I'm just going to give you my feedback on it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Looking, looking at, looking at this, you know, this type of roof and, and this type of building on the back, as it stands. The way, you, the way you've drawn it into this picture right next to the building, looking at the south elevation. I'm looking at this, to me, it screams industrial, it screams, uh, it, it screams the wrong word. It looks industrial, it looks out of place for me. Um, I, you know, there are some elements of the style of building like using shiplap, uh, I, I think could maybe be appropriate. Um, but you know, the big, huge glass doors uh, for you know an undetermined. It doesn't because what goes inside doesn't really matter to me. What really matters to me is what it looks like on the outside, and I'm just not seeing how it ties into the building, the existing building. Currently, it doesn't M much in the same sense that um, like is it Trinity Church and the John Hancock Tower in Boston are juxtaposed. Um, the thought being, and it's based on what I heard in the past in this meeting, so I could have been well off, um, but that juxtaposition is, at, is can be complementary. I'm not saying this design is. I want to work towards that, um, yeah. but, but trying to do this with uh, the same exact look as the existing building is too disingenuous to actually do, I guess, is what I'm getting. Mr. Kerr, I, I, would, I would certainly agree with you that copying a smaller version of the Masonic Hall would not be appropriate for an outbuilding. Right. However, I agree. I however, agree. as Mr. Raven has pointed out, there's, especially the drawing you're showing us, the scale of A, that front facade or the side, however you want to refer to it, the door facade of the thing. Oh yeah, is, we can call yeah, the garage front, certainly. It's yeah. enormous. Okay. It, is, it is totally out of scale with the, with the rest of the building, and it's supposed to be a subservient building to the main building. Uh, the generally, if one looks at an opening door, especially a up opening door, as in garages, is one expects a a vehicle of some sort to come out of it. Yeah. And if we go back to the 19th century, we expect a pair of draft horses with a carriage coming out from there. And the door is then appropriately sized for that. You have doors appropriately sized for a massive semi with what we're looking at here. Now, granted, you're in words, you propose something much smaller, which is 10 by 10. I'm open to a lot of things, well, is I guess yeah, the more yeah. I'm not proposing. Again, remember, I'm really no, not. No, no. You have yeah. proposed, not formally, but informally. It's been thrown out on the table. 16-foot doors have been thrown out on the table. 10-foot doors have been thrown out on the table. So let's, it, 
it's semantics. So let's not get bogged down on that. Uh, so if you're going to go with a 10 foot door, if, then I think one of the things that you should keep in mind is how does a 10 foot door and an appropriate size man door next to it work with the man door that we see immediately to its right with the stairs leading up to it. And I suspect that that door with the transom window is probably on the order of at least eight feet high. So if you put in an eight foot man door or maybe even a six foot eight man door with appropriate size transom and a 10 foot door next to it, then things. Yeah, start, oh, he froze. And I think part of what, I'm sorry. Well, I think you froze there for a second. You froze there for a second. Oh, for you. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that a vehicle door and the man door next to it should be human scaled. And yeah. So let so let's take yeah, so, oh, so that's fine. We lower it. Let's lower it from it says 16 feet. Let's imagine we drop it six feet and we leave the rest there. Okay. So, so take Mr. Carr, why don't you let all of us kind of give you our thoughts and you can take them together. Um, yeah. might be a way to handle it. You know, I don't have a problem theoretically with vertical ship lap painted black. Um for me, the massing of this relative to the building is just wrong. It's not, it's wrong with the building and it's wrong to the neighborhood. Um, although the Masonic Temple is a big property, uh, having something that is this tall is what the problem is. Um, and so it's not just the doors, it's the entire structure with, with uh, I think Vasek talked about um, a garage secondary structure is subservient. And when you look at that Southern exposure, this is an almost equal facade. So I don't necessarily have a problem with your, your materials. I, I think the scaling and the massing is not appropriate and just does not work for that site. Okay. I don't know if um, there are any others that anybody else, Chris, if you want to say anything. Yes, thank you, Claire. I, I know what the look you're getting. I've seen them in Asheville, down in Greenville, South Carolina. And I know th these are very attractive especially you said your copper, even though we don't really I care what's inside. Really great. But they look great. And it's appropriate, it, again, to, to even though, again, usage doesn't involve, but right, the height in, in that this exposure to the south is, is uh, it's probably a bigger massing than we've even seen when we went through the last alliteration here on the congregate housing. Uh, it, you, you, when we talked about, it, it's just too large. I have no problem. I, I think those are very attractive buildings you showed. Um, I, I like that. I like the ship lap, the uh, vertical boards. Um, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a decent start, but 16 foot, even 10 feet. Um, you know, I don't know if you can get down a little bit lower at grade um, in there. I can't at the grade. That's that's the grade is kind of set in stone. I, I saw you had a couple of culverts in there, no doubt. So I, yeah, I, yeah. So I was saying that, but it's a little yeah, a little that, risky. <laughs> That, that's I mean, all I, I, I like, uh, go ahead, Mark. I'm done. I like the, I, I do like the idea of tying in the transom lights. Um, I think the double transom light above the garage doors might be a bit much. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, and I, I would love, I would love, I'd love to also see a little bit more balance, you know, like everything kind of, it's short-sided on it, looking from the South elevation on the left side, it's short-sided there. I'd like to see a little bit more balance, but outside of that. Uh, yeah. Pardon me, just uh, for clarification, because you're that's more uh, um, you're and I'm I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but are you saying that it's the drawing you'd like maybe a little different angle on when I do come back, right? Is that what you're saying with that? Yeah, I think I would like to see a little bit more of a yeah, yeah a balanced look yeah. as opposed to it leaning way far out to to the left there with the doors. Hold on, I just I got to make sure I put out the right because it. It's, I have too many documents because I want to go over a few things here, but there we go. Um, and again, that's not the one, this one, right? You said you want it more balanced. Yeah, so you see how you have like so many boards to the right of the, the double doors yep. where, the man, where the man door is. And then you've got two boards to the left of the garage door. Yeah. Understood, yep. That's okay. Uh, that's a good observation. Well, plus he's talking about three 
base. Two, your, your goal is yeah. to get three, is that? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I, at first I was kind of thinking I, two is appropriate for, for what I need. But again, it was I just threw some ideas out so that I could have the the drawing be like, again, kind of like I said, it's I know this is over the top. So I guess I'm not surprised by what I'm hearing. Um, I will definitely look into, I'll say at least smaller uh, transoms. I think that's a bit I see I can and, and again with the 16 foot doors, it's it is it's too tall overall. If I, you know, once I'll shave it down six feet, then I'll look and I'll I'll try to kind of get a ratio that I feel more comfortable with. And then I'll, I'll probably come back to you guys that that feels like I think is what you're you're saying. Um, sure. Michael, let me ask like you this too. I'm sorry, Claire, go yeah, ahead. I, I, I was going to ask you about the age fact. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just was going to make a quick suggestion from your perspective. When you bring this back, if you're going to paint the vertical ship black a dark color, you may want your drawing to show that because part of why this is lifting and popping is that it's so white next to the brick. So oh, you yeah. may want to just color that in. I'm just giving you yeah. like a little. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, but it, again, we would. I would certainly expect to be seeing something coming back substantially shorter. Yeah. No, yeah. I, that's heard. Right. That's ahead. definitely heard. <laughs> that's heard. Yeah. Keep, keep in mind also all the pictures, those very nice photographs you showed us of garages. None of them were anywhere near the height of what you're proposing. I mean, the tallest one is the one with the gable roof. It's probably about 24 feet. The rest of them are what are 20 feet at best. So you know, a a 20 foot building is a lot different than a 31 foot building. Yeah. Again, again, that was, I want to, I want to have a, I, I'm hoping to kind of understand a threshold of what, and, and I understand I'm not holding anyone to anything, but if I come back with a, what this one was 31, six or 29, I should say, if I bring it back at 23, um, that might suit everyone. It may not. Um, but at the same time, maybe the answer is 22. But I wanted to start at what I could see as the maximum possible usable space for me. And so what you see drawn there is the maximum possible usable space for operating a brewery in the middle of a village. And I, like I said, I'm very flexible to making it quite a bit smaller. No matter what, this building will add a huge amount of functionality for me, right? No matter what. So Chris um, Lyons, you were going to talk about HVAC on the roof. Yeah, and I'd like to hear thank what you, you. Have to say. Yeah, just a quick question. You know, most people ideally now don't want HVAC equipment on a roof for service yeah. and, and many reasons. But unless this is for the your tanks, your brewing, I mean, can you speak to that? Why why you want wanted that? Well, I'm going to need so the the um, I'll point it out today, but I, there are no I don't have cut sheets for you guys today um, for the HVAC, but like. For the for the building as it is approved at zoning, right? I have 2,550 square feet of interior use approved, and then in the basement the same amount of square footage. In order for me to use that to make beer and make my customers comfortable in just the ground floor, not including the second floor of the main building, um, I have to install a pretty significant HVAC system, and in fact, then a pretty significant glycol system for the brewing. And where I'm getting concerned here as as a neighbor, uh, you know, for just being frank, as a neighbor to these folks, is you know how much how how much equipment can I possibly put on the north side of this building before it's too much? And and so the thought was, if I put it on the roof, it's a out of view of everyone from the south. Um, it's not very visible visible from the north. Um, and in fact, obviously there are ways that it could be obscured, even though it's on the roof, you know, if you're looking from Comstock and Fair, right? Like let's say that because that's the north and they would be able to see what's up there better than anyone. Um, but I, at least I thought that was a better chance than mounting it on the ground or on a slab, I mean, or then mounting it next door to the other, immediately adjacent to the other one that I'm already going to be proposing. Um, 
you know, what I'm proposing isn't terribly dissimilar from, I think, what the tab she's had or, or like what a lot of businesses do. It's a, you know, 12 ton chiller. Um, I'm going to be putting some of the other stuff inside of this garage was also part of the hope. I can put my glycol chiller in this garage. Um, and can I, cut in, can I cut in for a second with a question? Absolutely. Why does it have to be on the addition? Why can't it go higher up on the other roof or even be more out of sight and even less noise directed towards the neighbor's windows, et cetera? Lots of reasons. One, the roof up there is not engineered for the weight. It's also not um, flat. It's a big misconception that people think it's a flat roof. It's, it's, a, it's a 212 pitch. Uh, with this one, it can be designed right into our roof. Um, whereas, you know, what you see on the outside may not be what's actually there. So when I come back with, I can, you know, I mean, you can you can design it into the design. I guess is the best way to put it, right? Um, so it being it being necessary to use the addition to put all that on, that's going to change the roof line and the height even more. Um, you have to cut, I have to cut in some of it sunken and some of it out because of the angle of the roof, that sort of thing. Right. You, but you wouldn't see that um, from the outside. All you would have is what we present. Uh, you know, that's partially why there's the extra height. That I mean, again, I there's still plenty of room to fluctuate the height, but um, I can make a section of this roof <clears throat> have the HVAC equipment mounted in it, and drain appropriately. Whereas looking from the front, you won't see it. I'm not going to plop, um, uh, you know, a giant thing up on a perfectly flat roof that everyone can see. The goal of this is to sort of a obscure it. Um, but more importantly, give it a, a, a place uh, out of the way, you know, functional adding additional functional space because the those chillers take up square footage that I frankly just don't have. You know, do you I think it, do you think it do you think it could be effectively hidden and better blended in with a more than one angled roof? That flat roof is kind of simple. It's almost uh, it's a majestic building. It almost deserves more than a simple angled roof design. It might be easier to you know get it approved. Than I personally it don't in. think aesthetically it does, but I mean we can. Uh, your opinion is is certainly taken. If I use, uh, let's say, a more traditional roof, right? Uh, I mean, look, we can go a lot of ways. If this is a barn, if we imagine it as a barn, which was the first thought, and I said, we can't imagine this as a barn because, because again, that's sort of like faking history in a way that I think is too disingenuous for what we're doing. Um, and being that this is a Federalist building with, you know, Italiente elements, what does a Federalist garage or or we'll call it you want to call it a warehouse whatever the heck it is what does that look like and there's no example where there's a, a, a peaked roof a hip roof there's no um there's no gambrel there's none of that it's a flat roof and i thought an angle like this would allow me to make a more attractive modern design versus just kind of a flat Federalist. I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, just, I, don't, I, just know. Don't, know. I don't know if it's modern is, is the best for uh, complementing that old older building. I, well, the other concern I had was I don't think I would minimize the glass on the doors. Large glass doors of any size say modern or they say town garage. Okay. That's all. I would, I would, I would think about maybe designs that maybe a few panels as opposed to the whole door. Um, so I, I think if I was to go that path, um, I would consider potential. If I, if I can't make it all glass, I would probably want it to be all wood. Um, because, I, I, yeah, I mean, the one over here in the top right would maybe be a better example, if that's what you're kind of saying. Like, so you don't see whatever I might be do having inside of there. So to obscure any uh, potential clutter or what have you, right? Well, yeah, at night when the lights are on and it's dark out, you see inside. And if it's messy, it's just, it could be an eyesore. It could be a it's security. Kind of, it's like having glass kitchen cabinets, you know, everything in there has to look good. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess that's kind of the goal. Uh, but and you really keep the entire I mean, that's not our problem, but you have to keep the entire right. inside looking good, you know, but but regardless, 
it's not as much my issue. I, I think the modern piece is fine in terms of a contrast because how else would you match it? But it, for me, like I said, it's the NASA. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kerr, question. Um, how does this, I mean, clearly this, this will affect your parking, no? It's three parking spaces uh, and it's covering up three parking spaces, so. Okay, so we're, we we're had- gold, we're, we're golden there. there. I also, I provided 48 spaces and I only need 47. So if I end up losing one due to something, I have one in my pocket, so to speak. Um, okay. At least in my zoning approval. And also it, it's an interesting note is um, I didn't ask zoning for any parking variances. Uh, I came with all the parking I needed. And it, it, so I never once asked the town for parking. I provided it. So great. I've, I have a, a contractual agreement with Heartseed for all of their parking uh, oh. during non business hours and such. Um, this, it's, you know, it's part of the complexity of what's going on here. I mean, it, this building more than any building in the village is and was built and designed for public use. Um, it is it is truly the the town's building. It was really built that way, and it was intentionally placed on a quarter acre lot with no parking. So um, it's really kind of a shame I have to prove parking at all, uh, because the building once had a capacity of over 800, and I'm lowering that total capacity down to like 200 and something. So um, I'm. And theoretically, I'm, I'm giving parking back to the town, but I know it won't be seen that way. <laughs> well, I, I would just, like I said, keep it, keep in mind, you're talking about having a dumpster inside. You will see that with glass doors. I would yeah. think about that. But you would I, see it without the garage is the other point. And those doors are going to be open during business hours constantly. It's it's constant in and out. And it's just, it's a very contemporary look for one of the most iconic centered intersections in the whole district it's not like it's down the street no i i agree i, I hear you there that's it's i mean i i definitely thought about it it's a it's a huge point of consideration it's not like this photo in the bottom left where i have some nice classic cars parked there you know like unfortunately there will not be three old mustangs in that garage there will be none um but uh what about i mean just what about like the one on the right where you have um a solid I wouldn't use that material. I would probably use wooden panels um, because I think that's more appropriate. Um, I guess, I mean, I probably have enough to go away with. Um, okay. Well, it, it has to, whatever blends, whatever blends and, and yeah. whatever complements the, the, the architecture of the building. Contrast is nice, but something that's just totally different. Um, it's it's going to clash. Not, well, so, not not based on the traditional laws of architecture based on my studies but i understand it certainly can well, it's different um, it's different because it's we're talking about the historic district if it but was we're a talking i'm talking about home. a simplification if i go as simple as i can and if you look at the bottom right this is so simple so it allows the masonic temple to stand on its own but and, it is contemporary so there's a fine line there is yeah, I, so I guess that's kind of why I'm here. If you guys boo me out of the room right now, I take that with me and I come back with a a quaint little Cape Cod garage. <laughs> but I don't think that also I don't think that belongs, you know. Well, I don't think you, I don't think we booed you. Yeah, so, I, mean, I think you can you find can, out. I totally think you can find a, um, a happy medium. medium yeah. Medium. Well, so my my two cents on it. Yes. Is the glass you're proposing is huge. Not so much the door, but each individual chunk of glass. Yeah. Is four foot by two foot. Huge. And yep. each individual piece of glass in the Masonic home is inches by inches. Mm. Inches by inches. Look at your own drawings. Oh, uh, the bottom of every window is a solid pane. So the two windows in the front of the building that are on either side of the door, uh, those are three and a half feet by three foot panels of glass, or I think they're actually four feet by three foot panels. They're really enormous pieces of single but, pane. But glass. let's look at the side. Of your point's room. taken. No, your point's taken. I'm not going to. Yeah. So, that, yeah. so that's one. Number two is you have an absolutely enormous wall, 31 feet high. If you break that roof someplace, and drop part of it at least towards above the door. That 
even if the building stays at 31 feet high, mm. but that wall is less, that will make I see. the massing very different. Like a hip roof kind of, uh, hip, yeah. Just a simple yeah. gable. But eliminating a 31 foot tall wall will go yep. a long way to making everything more human scale. Yeah, I mean, I already said that's a good I suggestion, Bossic. I can see that. I can see that, Bossic. That's a that's a good suggestion. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I have, it gives me an interesting idea for the roof. It might be a little bit more attractive. I'll sketch it up a bit. Yep. Um, I didn't want to get crazy with the drawings because honestly, it's this feedback that will allow me to come back with drawings that are maybe, you know, worth discussing more detail with. Mm -hmm. So thank you, guys. Well, that's my two cents. Yeah. Yeah, and and can I add to that? Uh, for the treatment of the side of that garage, which is now just a no window, no detail, no, you know, it's it's just a big wall that's facing that the greenhouse that's next to it. Um, yeah, that that view. You might want to think about maybe wrapping around some windows or something there to soften that massive just wall in your face kind of look so that wall is a practical design and and how about i mean honestly with with what uh vasek just mentioned it won't be anywhere near as large for one thing let's just say first off i swipe type take six feet off it and then let's say i add a little bit of hip which lowers this whole side by another three feet i've made a 31 foot at its highest point wall drop nine feet so you know we're really talking about 22 feet that's I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about the size i just mean the effect of looking at because it is visible visible from the street sight line just something to make it whether it's it maybe uh an access door can be put there if you need one or something just think something so it's not just looking at a big vertical stripe. the purpose is sound deadening and so solid wall is is truly preferred um don't you have a tree over in that corner I, there is a tree right there yeah actually that's a good point i think there is a tree them. there i didn't show you guys the site plan for that you know what there it's not it hasn't been relocated um to its official spot but it will be moved back like into a safe little spot in the corner there um that works but yeah that, remember, that'll remember, help vegetation but vegetation comes and goes yeah yeah they, they I think so, uh, there will be a there will also be I don't know if you guys recall you approved you approved a seven foot fence the town only allowed a six foot fence so I'll be building a six foot fence along that property line as well and I'll be planting it with honeysuckle so um, between the six foot fence and then that peak if I as I just said if it's at you know closer to let's say even 23 feet say not even 21 um, it's not as exposed and especially with the angle roof, but maybe there's a, a window. I mean, I can, I can reach out to, um, you know, Paul and see his thought, but he's not, um, he's not given me feedback yet on of any of the times I've reached out. So I, I always, I mean, I, I hope he would give me a preference, but I can, I can try and maybe come up with something to make a, a little breakup of the wall. Um, Mr. Carr, also, when you come back in, um, I would very much, and I think we all would, it would help us all if we could see a streetscape. Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna have all sorts of fun drawings. Yeah, yeah. field streetscape so that we can see yeah. um, the massing of that both to the west and to the north perspectives. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, I mean, that's, that tells the real story once we get closer to the appropriate scale. Um, you know that's where you you can figure out the difference with a couple feet versus this one is obviously kind of a maximum it has to fit uh, into the neighborhood it's not just the two yep. buildings together yep yep um okay any right. anything else specifically on the garage because there's a few other things that i just wanted to talk to you guys about briefly get questions before i come back with officials and they'll yep. be very quick i promise yeah so uh damien Krugo here on the uh chris and damien show so um, I think my concern is on that west elevation, 
I just want to reinforce the point yep. that you've got the single pitch for the roof. I'd like to reinforce the idea that you proposed something that has two pitches to it. Um, doesn't have to be a gamble to make it complicated, but that could be. I think it's better if it's just a simple barn pitch with a simple gamble so that um, it reduces the visual verticality effect that you're getting from the south streetscape. So if we're standing on that road or over by Wisco Pizza and everything, as you're looking towards what would be your garage doors, we are looking at some roof. That way you're still getting some height in the middle where the ridge line would be, but you're not getting it all massed towards, towards the south elevation. It's distributed more to the center of your um, garage extension. Okay. And, and I just have a question then since we're talking about the roof, uh, what are you proposing, Mike? A, a, a steel uh, get, or what type of roof or, or an asphalt? Uh, I think for this, I would go metal, um, yeah, metal. Yeah. if it's appropriate. Yeah. Like, that would look good. Yeah, I mean, with these kind of buildings, if if you can, you know, if you can work with glass, black, a nice uh, warm wood tone and a metal roof, you can make, it, I mean, it could just the simple attraction of the materials go a long way. And um, again, it's a quite sustainable design, so. All right. What else do you have for us, Mr. Kirk? All right, let's be quick about this. And I'm going to close a few things. So just bear with me briefly. You're going to be able to see it. I don't think I've got anything up except for some picture frames I was looking at for my potential street sign. So I don't think that's anything weird. All right, we close that. All right, da, da, da. Close. Close. I close you. All right, and I think this one has other pages that I didn't get into. So, yeah, all right. All right, so first things first, what I wanna get into here is, uh, this is the site plan you guys already saw, but it's now been refined a little bit based on comments from zoning. And I think um, you may not have seen it at this level of development. And also I know that you've had some folks change in the position. So. Um, when this back parking was approved, um, it wasn't drawn. I don't think you guys even actually got a chance to prove park, approve parking. Um, as you, of course, just saw, I don't want the whole thing to be parking anyway. Um, when I come back to you, I'll, I'll come back with all of that. But what it does do is it gives me an opportunity. If you see here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, uh, but there's a set of stairs here. So what I'm looking to do is make a another entrance into the building for my service staff um, in the basement design this uh, i'm going to call it the southwest corner of the building is uh, the kitchen and so when my patio is open in summer i want my staff to be able to walk um, up you know three or four steps because uh, the basement is only partially buried here there's approximately uh, from this patio that uh, you guys already saw, um, but there is approximately four feet of earth above the floor of the basement. So um, if you're in the basement, you're only four feet underground, so to speak. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have this set of stairs come up. Uh, people, they would walk out of the kitchen. There's currently a window over here. So we would end up like um, closing up the window and and replacing the opening with a door that would go to a set of stairs that can come either forward towards church street or back towards the future garage door and it's just two or three steps up um you know obviously with appropriate drainage it's not all drawn but it's it's essentially to make it a lot more functional um other than having to go you're aware of that big concrete set of stairs that's outside that you see on the drawing right here um, those big concrete stairs, it's like, what is it like? I think it's like 12 steps. So you got to climb up those 12 steps, go inside the building, and then go down a full 14 step flight of stairs into the basement. And I just thought it was a much more functional uh, way to use things, but it also provided additional emergency exit for the kitchen. And so as a design, it made a lot of sense. And there is a pre-existing like variance over this whole thing but 
we didn't realize that I, I needed to bring it to you guys. So it, it, you know, I got to go back through your approval. Then I got to go back to the town again. Uh, excuse me, the zoning. I know you guys are town, um, but it's it's just kind of a it's a it's a kind of a real key functional feature that we included in the design. So um, any questions? I mean, I know you can see it drawn from above. It's you know, it's it's a it's everything you've ever you've seen. You know, they're concrete steps that just like the existing materials concrete, you know. Um, so that's one thing I want to bring. I mean, I don't know if you guys, anybody has feedback on that. Obviously, when I come to propose it to you, I'll show it to you with a little better elevation. But if there's anything I should consider. Um, well, any... here, I'm going to need to understand how that fits in with the garage you're proposing. But oh, okay. it's on the garage drawing I had. I'm sorry. I now have closed it, I believe. I see. So this is that's the man door that we've been talking about. Uh, yeah, the man door that you can see is directly in line with these three, uh, excuse me, four steps heading north, right? Okay. Got it. Thank okay. you. Yep. So so what that does is I don't think it's likely, but I decided to have it so that this little extra set of stairs could go either north or south. Um, the initial design was just to come out and head south, but the realization that it's only two feet difference, I don't want somebody jumping down two feet. I thought that's pretty dangerous. So I'd rather have railings and all the above, you know. Okay. Um, so no and, removal of the south side, the the twelve steps up that that whole. No, concrete. I mean that's, that was the design of the building, and I'm going to keep it there because okay. it, it serves All a right. lot. And of then you have uh, paving. Is that so? From the material that's going to be in the you have grass there. It looks like a bush. Is that all going to be paved there, Micah? You yeah. see where so, you have the checkerboard. Yep. Yeah. So the checkerboard that stairwell to those stairs. Yeah, and paving is these are it's not paving. Um, the town Paper. asks specifically that we use permeable pavers. So these are those like concrete. Um, let me. I think we actually have a drawing of them on here somewhere. But those turf stone pavers where you um, have grass growing in between. Sure. Them. There yeah, they're there. Yep. These guys here. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, so it will it will generally be. Um, all, all water stays on property. That's you know the key thing with all this. Um, but yeah, so that little area will have we'll call it some some pavers to help keep it in support. But that little area is staff only, right? Um, the reason I extended the I have these these are hop plants along the edge of the fence, and then another tree. But um, I just made sure that the patio included that so that if a service staff was bringing a beer or something from the patio into the service area, the kitchen, that they would be within the legal patio so that it wasn't like, you can't have alcoholic beverages outside of this fence. I, I think the staff can carry them, but it just made it, it's cleaner this way. Um, so it does that. And then also the staff asked us to add a little a trash bin here and like a service bar. And I'm, I don't know why that post-it note thing keeps popping up. I don't understand CAD. It's above me. That's why I pay people, smarter people than me. You know. And I, I have a quick question. Um, we just went through this kind of similar issue with the Charles and their fence, and we were going back and forth about what design. And in the end, they just they found out that they didn't require the fence, so it was omitted from the plan. Um, as far as separating the area where people would sit and drink and eat, in the public sidewalk. Um, I don't know if if you've looked into that more. Or this is a unique situation. Well, uh, I don't know what they found. Um, I just know that my conversation with the head of the regional health department, um, it's possible um, that we have different, we're under different regulatory agencies as a brewery and as a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I'll check with Bryce. I mean, but I would check or, on that. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I still want to have a fence there because I don't want random people walking across things. And I think defining a space is kind of important, you know. Agreed. The other thing is the other thing is is the reason I'm defining this the way I am is by making it linear, right? We're connecting the end of this stairwell out here towards my fence line, uh, which this fence was required by zoning. So it's gonna be there, I guess. Uh, even though I disagree with this location, um, because I think it should go along the sidewalk and be nice and pretty. 
Um, they wanted it on my property line and that's fine. So I was offering to either buy or lease this right of way from the town uh, so that it could be more um, in line with the rest of the buildings in the village where the, the fence is always perpendicular, excuse me, parallel to the sidewalk. Um, but that's an argument I wasn't willing to have at the time. And I'll have to come back to that in a couple of years and I'll build a new fence and whatever, you know, this was my plan for this was always a temporary fence anyway. Um, but along this section, I'm going to have hop plants and hops grow incredibly fast and they're pretty luscious. And so that will also help create a nice little barrier um, for the neighbors that no one will be able to see the those stairs or the patio from the west so it will help occlude that plus with the tree there so using hot plants uh which used to grow right on this property incidentally there were hot plants there within the last i think 10 years since i've lived in town i've seen hops growing over the old fence that used to be on the north side um which is a shame because i would have totally captured them because they're <laughs> There might be some unique hop, I don't know. Um, but I'll be planting um, hops that I'm already growing here on my property on Maple Street. I'll just transplant them over there, so. Okay, what else do we have? All right, so that's that and another, oh yeah, well, I kind of just mentioned it, right? So the fence that you guys all, I gotta stop saying guys, I'm apologize to you, Claire, specifically. Um, but you folks, I like that word, it's a good one. Um, I don't think we had the extension of the fence to the west of the stairs. I've now extended it to the west of the stairs, as you see in this area. But I also made it more clear on the design on this northeast corner. So we have like a bike rack here, right? Um, and the patio will be using pavers in this front section now, which previously I had not proposed. Uh, the reason being is I've, I've, having spent some time with the building now, I've realized that it's all mud. I, I have always kind of paid some attention to this building, but I never realized just how muddy the front section of the building was. And it's because of the beech tree and the sycamore. They're just enormous trees. They create so much shade that grass barely grows. And so instead of like, um, you know, living in denial, I thought I would at least put these pavers in so that it wasn't just soupy mud, that it would at least have these pavers and maybe some grass, um, but you know, it just added stability. So that was one thing, those pavers. And then also we're gonna put a little gate right here just so that the patio doesn't like disappear. I don't think we had drawn a gate over here when I first met with you folks. So it just makes it so that nobody feels the need to walk behind here. Um, not the need, but um, I don't know. Customers, no offense, we are all customers, but we also, um, you got to kind of plan for the, the most inquisitive, curious customer that's going to wander around your building. And they don't, I don't want them going through a gate. I don't want them going through there. So um, no, nobody does, you know, and we don't want, I don't think we want people walking through the, the, the ENT's property to get to Comstock and vice versa. It's, I think it's just, let's use the sidewalks, you know? Right. So. All right. Uh, other thing was now I have shown tables and stuff on there, uh, shown how they fit, shown approximate density. I don't think you guys got to see that. Um, there's been no changes to the front entry. Um, I, I don't think since you approved it, there's been none at all. Um, I haven't selected lighting and this was like one of the last things I think I wanted to just kind of talk with you guys now before I gave you submittals, but um, by code we're required to have 100% um, shut off, dark skies compliant, yada, 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 like, you know, all the right restrictions that the world requires today. But what I found is the only possible fixtures <laughs> that meet those requirements would probably give everyone on this commission an aneurysm because they give me an aneurysm. They're just God awful, ugly, modern, plasticky looking things. Do you have a source for something that like, even just to find the matching lantern light, 
the on the south side of this building above that concrete above these concrete stairs here the existing light is a you know just a little lantern light um now it doesn't work it's some somebody broke it 10 years ago right but um i mean i can't even propose something like that a carriage light or if you will um with because it's not dark skies compliant and they don't it's impossible to make it dark skies compliant um do you guys have uh, a, a any i have you heard of any places to go look for that or do we just propose what i what i think is historically appropriate wouldn't the answer be in the switches not the lights and no if if i flip the light I mean, on like that sort of thing if i flip the switch on one of those lights um there is a reflection that goes no uh, up straight up and therefore it's no longer dark skies compliant and therefore it's in violation of town um zoning and building codes so i want to be respectful i mean granted this entire building is bathed in a massive sodium spotlight from across the street i'm not going to pretend that i'm in a dark skies region but I think you guys are every time I've come to you, I'm like, how can we make this better? Like, that's how I roll. Um, any any suggestion there? Um, I'm listening because I I'm having the hardest time with light fixtures that are so, anything but, yeah, but in, just horrible. So, Mr. Kerr, uh, what I yes. can do is I'm not familiar with exactly what was used, but I work for Wesleyan University. They have an observatory. They are very concerned about that issue. So I can reach out to the facilities people and see what they used around campus, especially around the observatory. That that would definitely you be know, helpful. I um, might be happy with the price tags they paid, but you can take it from there. I think that's been the nature of this project from the beginning, Vasek. So it's just is what it is, right? Okay, I will reach out to them. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Um, yeah, oh. I went to, I went to Stony Brook and we had so much light pollution that our observatory barely worked. <laughs> so, uh, I think, you know what, I don't want to keep y'all anymore. I'm, I have a million things that will eventually come up, but I, I want to make sure that when I do go through the list, like some of them are just minor things. I just know I need your approval. Right. So, so we will be doing that. Um, All right. I'll be coming to you guys with a sign um uh that's i just you know i read all it'll be all appropriate wooden sign but um you know you guys might get to make your call on that when i send it to you right so hey micah just a quick yeah, question since you have you here quickly you it, you talked about the parking before and it looks like the p and z is asked asking to get two handicap spaces uh in your drawing here the second email that you sent you're hitting on a tough subject right now, my friend. No, well, I, I'm just concerned about uh, this was, was a concrete. This is your ramp from the roadside to match the walkway. Is, is that your at your cost? So who's doing that? Is that but where are you speaking specifically? Uh, this is front of the Belden House now, a little farther down. Yeah, I just designate. Can, is it where I'm showing right now? Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. So this 12 one max, this is identified as a concrete walkway. Um, it's whatever they tell me to be. Yep. Ramp. Um, whatever it is, I'm paying for it. It's whatever they want. I think if, if it has to be who's brick, they? brick. Who, who's yeah. they? Uh, they is they is 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 zoning. It's honestly, if you really want, I mean, I don't care that this is recorded or whatever, but it's the town manager. The town manager inserted herself in the process because she didn't like that my proposal for handicap parking um, removed by her terms removed public parking. And so I've been kind of in a, 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 a holding pattern with the town manager and the town engineer over how we are doing handicap parking. So they have this current plan and I, if they're okay with this, I'll do it, <laughs> you know. Um, that tells us what we need to know, Mr. Carr. Thank you. No yeah, I need to those I, other details. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they are. If they say it's paved or it's concrete, uh, I'm up for whatever. Is my point. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I just, 
I just don't want it. I want, I would, I just don't want it. Uh, the alternative was to cut down trees and I'm not going to participate in that under any circumstances. I, you know. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming in. This is, uh, again, this is an exciting project. I think we're all excited to see it come to fruition and, yeah, well. uh, we're getting there. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank I'll uh, I'll probably see you guys. I won't be bringing the garage yet. That'll take a little while, but I'll be back with everything else I need for my prior approval, which is those parking spaces and those side stairs and the patio changes. Okay. I'll All right. Stay. Thank oh, you. And, and probably a sign. Sorry. <laughs> I should identify what I'm doing here, right? No worries. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. And thank you for the feedback. I will, I, I think I took all the notes, but at least the next iteration will be a lot closer and, and we can go from there. Okay. All right. Thank perfect. You. Thanks all for right. coming in. Yep. Bye-bye. All right, Kim, do we have any correspondence? We don't have any correspondence. All right. So then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, does, um, Chris Hall, do you want to mention anything? You did mention that you wanted to talk about something or do you want to wait till next time? He's, he's me. You took a nap? They went to get pizza. <laughs> All right, we'll wait till next time. All right, motion to adjourn. So motion. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody, for tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Chairman, Chair, Vice Chair. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Linda. Good job, guys. Always thank you.